So, uh, Prince William and uh, Kate, they've uh, gone on a tour of the Caribbean, visiting the former colonies, basically what it is. Uh, and uh, they've angered Jamaicans. Right? So here's the headline from Al Jazeera. Uh, it reads, Jamaicans call for reparations as British royal couple arrives. Jamaican activists, as well as prominent professors, politicians, and other leaders have rejected a visit by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, calling on the United Kingdom to apologize and pay reparations for hundreds of years of slavery. Britain's Prince William, the grandson of Queen Elizabeth II, and his wife Kate landed in the capital Kingston on Tuesday afternoon as part of a wider week-long Caribbean tour. The royal couple's trip coincides with the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence and the 70th anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. It also comes at a time of growing scrutiny of colonial-era British conduct in the Caribbean and elsewhere. In an open letter published on the weekend, a hundred Jamaican leaders said they saw no reason to celebrate the Queen's coronation, quote, because her leadership and that of her predecessors have perpetuated the greatest human rights tragedy in the history of mankind. So you can see here his posts on Twitter from their official account uh, arriving in Kingston. Troops on display ready for inspection. Where These are, of course, British uniforms. Um, quote, During her 70 years on the throne, your grandmother has done nothing to redress and atone for the suffering of our ancestors that took place during her reign and or during the entire period of British trafficking of Africans, enslavement, indentureship, and colonization, the letter read. Dozens of people also gathered on Tuesday outside the British High Commission in Kingston, singing traditional Rastafarian songs and holding banners with the phrase, Say Ya Sorry, a local Patwa phrase urging Britain to apologize. Quote, I am a descendant of great African ancestors. I owe it to them to be here. Customer service, who Jay Hutchinson, 27 years old, said at the rally, where activists read out 60 reasons for reparations. Quote, I want to make the British crown recognize that they have committed a great crime against the African people and that they must apologize and give back what they have taken from the ancestors. The royal couple's visit to Jamaica comes just months after Barbados in November officially became a republic, replacing the British monarch as its head of state and severing its last remaining colonial bonds nearly 400 years after the first English ships arrived at the Caribbean island. There's a very good graphic here that I wanted to show you. Um... You will see all the ships. Take a look. Hi, I'm Femi OK. Welcome to the stream. Today we're talking about slavery reparations, former colonizers, and what potentially the payment of reparations could do in terms of institutional racism and racism around the world. Have a look here at my laptop. Just a reminder about the transatlantic slave trade. This is a timeline from the transatlantic slave trade database. Those slave ships that you see crossing from the African continent and back through to the Caribbean and, uh, and North America. They are Portuguese and British and French and Spanish from the Netherlands, from America gives you an idea of the height of the transatlantic slave trade and what it meant. An estimate of between 12 and a half million people and maybe up to 20 million people from the African continent were enslaved. So two questions that always come up when slavery reparations are talked about. So, I mean, that, that's incredible. You saw the, uh, the, the ships, right? Again, I, I'm assuming most of you know this. But um, regardless, I'm going to explain it. So you guys know what this, the transatlantic slave trade uh, was, right? The, I mean, th this was a disgusting, uh, exactly what, it, what the name implies, a slave trade. And I'm going to show you how this works. It, it, it was basically like a triangle, right? So you would have manufactured goods coming from Europe to Africa, and then they would, you know, buy slaves and then bring the slaves over to the 13 colonies in the Caribbean. Um, and then, you know, uh, take raw materials in exchange and so on. That You know, it's, it was the triangular trade, as also as it's called. I mean, I, um, I learned all of this in French, but uh, yeah, th th this is 
this is uh, something that went on for hundreds of years. And I think the graphic that she just showed is absolutely astonishing. The animation, rather. I mean, you, you can see the, just the scale of it, right? It's, it's truly an industry. Uh, uh, a very uh, uh, tragic uh, and, uh, and uh, painful industry, right? So you, you can see the, the amount of ships. It's, it's uh, horrifying, you know? And so, I mean, the, the British... The British were, uh, no, the, the French were the first to abolish slavery, but then, and, and then the British followed suit, but then the French brought it back. And I mean, of course, you know, they were the first to abolish slavery. Yeah, after what? After hundreds of years of this. So what the Jamaicans are asking, and rightfully so, is just the, the basic, the bare minimum of an apology and of, of course, reparations. But even just the bare minimum of an apology. What do you think happened uh, when Prince William and Kate came to Jamaica? Do you think he gave an apology? See for yourself. Particularly this week, with the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. I strongly agree with my father, the Prince of Wales, who said in Barbados last year that the appalling atrocity of slavery forever stains our history. I want to express my profound sorrow. Slavery was abhorrent and it should never have happened. While the pain runs deep, Jamaica continues to forge its future with determination, courage and fortitude. The strength and shared sense of purpose of the Jamaican people represented in your flag and motto, celebrate an invincible spirit. Yeah, I mean, okay. Um, those are very nice words. Where, but, you know, where's the apology? They, they, this is what I find so disgusting, is that they, they not only refuse to, to pay the reparations, but the, the bare minimum of just saying the word sorry. Which, I mean, that, that doesn't even come close to making up for it. But it's the principle, you know? Nothing. So, you know, they, they, they try to distract you with all these nice words and, oh, your fortitude. And, no, 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 no. Thank you very much. Where's the apology? Where, where is the admission of guilt? And, um, you know, if, if you actually feel bad about it, you have to begin with a sorry. That's, that's the only way to begin the healing process, the reparations process. You can't start it uh, with... You know, a distraction. Here's from CBC. Headline reads, Prince William expresses profound sorrow for slavery in Jamaica visit, but offers no apology. So, again, Prince William expressed his profound sorrow for slavery during a visit to Jamaica, though he stopped short of offering the apology demanded by protesters who were also seeking reparations for Britain's role in the slave trade. So he was, he, again, he was addressing a dinner in Kingston, in Jamaica's capital, and he echoed the words of his father, the Prince of Wales, Wales who described the slave trade as an appalling atrocity during a visit to Barbados last year. And um, as, as we were reading before, Barbados severed its ties. It's a republic now. Um, and uh, protesters in Jamaica have spoken out against the trip, demonstrating outside the British High Commission on Tuesday with raised fists and wearing T-shirts emblazoned with a pair of shackled black wrists surrounded by the phrase, see ya sorry. So, again, I, I think that this is... Um, uh, this is appalling that they can't even give an apology, you know? And the, the whole... I mean, the entire... The entire principle of showing up to of a former colony... Uh, I mean, don't they have any self-awareness? Like, read the room. You know the phrase, read the room? Have some self-awareness. Like, what are you doing? This, you know, you're, you're arriving like some pompous... Uh, uh, you know, royal coming there to in, to inspect the the colonial troops and, and I mean this is it's disgusting. What are you doing there? What are you doing there? I I really uh 
I, 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 I don't know what to say. It's so arrogant. And you know, do you know what this reminds me of, by the way? For, so you guys know, obviously, France was um, one of the, the, the biggest uh, European colonial powers. Um, and in Algeria, il y avait les pieds noirs. So what, what the French did with Algeria was more than just a, a colony. They, they wanted Algeria so bad, they actually made it a, a département. So you know how in the United States you have states, like individual states, and in the UK you have counties, uh, and in Germany you have Bundesländer. In, in, in France, they have département, right? It's basically how, how the, the provinces. They actually made Algeria a département. So that's how bad they wanted it. And, uh, you know, the people, the, the, the French people who were born there, settler colonizers, you know, they called them les pieds noirs. Um, and um, they wouldn't leave, you know? They, they I mean, the Algerians, 1.5 million of them died trying to fight for independence. It's a genocide. You know, the, the, the French did some abhorrent stuff. They would, uh, you know, they were... Sh I, I don't know if, you, if I can even say it on YouTube. Really horrific, horrific torture and, and genocide. And this is, again, uh, uh, 5060s, right? So Macron, the French president, he recognizes the crimes that France committed, but he won't apologize. <laughs> Same thing, right? Same thing. Here, this is from France 24. No repentance, nor apologies for colonial abuses in Algeria, says Macron. French President Emmanuel Macron has ruled out issuing an official apology for abuses in Algeria. Uh, his office said Wednesday, ahead of a major report on how France is facing up to its colonial past in the country. So Macron's office said there will be no repentance, nor apologies. Uh, and that instead the French leader would take part in symbolic acts aiming at promoting reconciliation. Again, do, do you see how they, they insult? Like, they add insult to injury, li literally. Literally adding insult to injury. So it's no apology. It's screw you and we'll do some symbolic bullshit that, that you know, doesn't meet any of the demands of the victims. Doesn't, it, it, it's, it's, you know, there's no basic respect and again, this is, uh, you know, they say the atrocities committed by both sides during the 1954-1962 Algerian War of Independence. Uh, come on, it, this is not a both sides thing. You have people fighting for their independence and, uh, co you know, colonizers trying to subjugate them. It's, you know, this is ridiculous to compare that. Uh, in any case, Mac Macron, the first president born after the colonial period, has gone further than any of his predecessors in recognizing French crimes in Algeria. Later... Wednesday, a historian commissioned by the president with assessing the progress made by France on the memory of the colonization of Algeria and the Algerian war will submit his findings. This is back in 2021, right? And so uh, the report is, uh, is not, however, expected to recommend that France issue an apology, <laughs> but rather suggests ways of shedding light on one of the darker chapters of French history and propose ways of promoting healing. Well, again, man, you want to promote healing? You start with an apology. I don't know why I have to explain this. This is so basic, you know? In any case, that's... That's, uh, that's France, of course, and Algeria. But I, I, do you guys see the parallel in how, you know, the British and the French, they, they quote-unquote recognize the colonial crimes, but they refuse to apologize for them? In my opinion, if you refuse to apologize for it, then you're not... You're not admitting to it. You're not recognizing it. And um, I, I think it's disgusting. I think uh, this is the bare minimum. This is why I always tell you guys that when, when people talk about economic migrants, you know, they try to, like, differentiate, like, oh, these guys are refugees, uh, um, which they don't want to take in anyway, right, in Europe and North America. And then, well, United States, Canada does take in refugees. But in any case, my point is that, you know, in the West, they try to differentiate between refugees and economic migrants, like as if it's a crime to want a better life. They're like, that's that guy's not a refugee. He's just trying to find a better life. Yeah, <laughs> everyone should do that. I don't understand why that's a bad thing. Like you're, you're saying they should be miserable. In any case, 
for me, I don't see a difference because you're going to come here and tell me that this slave trade over here, again, I'm, I'm pulling this up on the screen so you can see the, the massive scale of what's going on. This, this enormous slave trade, the plundering, the theft, hundreds and hundreds of years. Look, look at that. Thieving of raw materials, thieving of people. The theft of people, literally. Uh, and again, this is just one period. The, the triangular trade is one facet of it. We, I mean, this doesn't even touch on Southeast Asia, right? And India. And the rest of the African continent. So th this is just one part of the colonial crimes. And so you're telling me that this shit went on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Stealing people, stealing resources, uh, uh, killing colonizing, subjugating, and that doesn't have an effect on the world today. Are you serious? What a coincidence that all the countries doing the stealing over here in Europe and over here in North America are rich, and the ones that have been stolen from are poor. What a fucking coincidence. Ah, it just happened like that, did it? Pure chance. I mean, do, do you think we're stupid or something? Again, do I have to remind you that... What happened in Algeria, just the la, la guerre d'indépendance, the, the, the struggle for independence, that's 60 years ago. There are people still alive. You know, my, when, they, when they came and put Israel right in the middle of the Arab world, which is again as a colonial project, our grandmothers are older than Israel. Our grandmothers. The Sykes-Picot, when the French and the British carved up the Middle East, Syria, Palestine... That's 1916, 1917. That's barely a hundred years ago. And you're telling us that that doesn't have an effect on the world today. Get out of here, man. India got its independence in, in the 1940s, just after World War II. And if you ask me, we're living in a neo-colonial period. A lot of these countries, the so-called former colonial powers, are still subjugating these countries. What do you think France is doing in Africa? You think they left Africa alone? France is, is, is plundering the, uh, the uranium from Niger, for example, right? Uh, France controls the, the currency, the money of 14 African countries. They, 14 African countries have a currency called le CFA franc, the CFA franc. That's, that's a currency, a colonial currency, a, mo a monetary policy controlled by France. They, they literally controlled the money of 14 African countries in France. And you're telling me that they're independent? They're not independent. Gaddafi got killed because he tried to switch these countries away from the CFA franc and away from the dollar. Gaddafi wanted a, a, an African currency. You know, like the European Union has the euro. Gaddafi wanted Africans to have the golden dinar. So Africans choose uh, uh, how they sell African resources in an African currency. So not selling African resources to the benefit of the United States dollar or the euro or the British pound. No, 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 no. You want African resources, you buy it with African money. And they killed him for it. Hillary Clinton's emails. In her emails, you see her discussing how the, the, the French are aware of what Gaddafi's trying to do. And they know how much gold he has, 144 tons of gold, which would back up that currency, help back it up. This is why they killed this man. They don't mess around. You start messing with their paper, they will kill you. And they destroyed Libya. They didn't just kill a man, they killed the whole country. Uh, this is why they kill people like Patrice Lumumba. This is why they go after the global south. Because when people start really fighting for independence, monetary independence and otherwise, they come for you. And so... These are things that happened not long ago. We are still living in the consequences of these things. And so to say that, oh, there's, you, why reparations? That happened a long time ago. No, it didn't happen a long time ago. I'm sorry. Uh, as long as we are still living in the effects of those crimes, we are still living through the consequences of those crimes. Uh, as long as people in the Caribbean, African Americans, Africa is living through the, the, the in the consequences of those crimes, it's not a thing of the past. It's in the present. It's right now. Uh, it, if you're going to make that argument, right, that it's a time-based uh, thing, that it's restricted by time.
And the same thing for the Arabs. I'm sorry, but these borders that you are looking at on this map um, in Africa, in the Middle East, were not drawn by Africans or Arabs. These were drawn by white men from Europe. Let me repeat that. The borders in Africa, the borders in the Middle East, were not drawn by Africans or people from the Middle East. They were drawn by white men from Europe. So they, they came and carved up our lands, and they stick Israel right in the middle, a settler colony, uh, and then they act like, oh yeah, you're on your own. And then when it suits them, they come and bomb us, they bomb Iraq, they steal the oil. How is that different from 200 years ago? What, what's the difference? You just gave it a new name, it's democracy, uh, uh, you know, spreading. <laughs> it's bringing freedom. I don't care what you call it. That's fucking colonialism. You're coming into a country. You're occupying the country, imposing your rule of law and stealing the resources and killing the people. I don't that 2022 or 1882. It's the same shit. So don't come here and tell me this is a thing of the past. I'm not tolerating that. So when people say that there's a difference between refugees and migrants, I, I don't care what you call it. Uh, both parties are suffering from an imbalance of wealth and from, uh, 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 you know, subjugation that continues to this day. Uh, someone that is escaping from a country in Africa or in Latin America, just because their country is not at war or, or under current occupation, doesn't mean that they're not suffering from colonialism. The, the United States, to protect its interests under the Monroe Doctrine in the Western Hemisphere, has done coup d'etats in almost every country in the vicinity, in Central America, Latin America, and, and that has caused enormous instability, decades of instability, of stunted economic growth, uh, of, of uh, you know, th this lack of peace. Of course a country cannot develop when it's under attack, when the government is being overthrown, uh, all of this chaos. So someone today is still suffering from, from, from actions 50 years ago, 30 years ago. And the same thing uh, with Africa, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of theft, stolen resources, stolen, uh, you know, humans, enslaved. And all of these countries built their capitals up. You go, you go, you walk in Paris, all of these beautiful, gorgeous avenues and buildings, London, the same thing, all these big avenues, such beautiful monuments. Who, where did you get this wealth from? Where, where did this wealth come from? Why, why is the Bank of England filled with all this gold? Where did you get this stuff from? It fell out of the sky? <laughs> America, the United States, literally built off the backs of slaves. They, couldn't, they, they, they didn't even build it themselves. They had to get slaves to build it for them, in addition to the stolen resources. So you want to come here and tell me that this imbalance of wealth, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, oh yeah, Africa has corrupt leaders. The Arabs have corrupt leaders. Look, man, that excuse can only work so much. You, you, you know, the, the West plundered for centuries, and now they want to act like that doesn't have an effect. I'm not buying this. I'm sorry. And you are mistaken and trying to, you know, revise history. And it's disgusting. And the fact that people like Prince William or Emmanuel Macron cannot even issue a basic apology. One word. Sorry. Désolé. Which it doesn't even begin to make up for it, but just the principle of admitting and apologizing. They won't do that. Th this is the lack of, of respect. This is the disrespect, the contempt, you know, that, that they have. And I, I think that's disgusting, and it's no different from, from colonialism 100 years ago. No different whatsoever. Whatsoever. All the French corporations, the multinationals, are in Africa, in the same countries, plundering the resources and giving the Africans pennies from what they make. So they, instead of the, the, the state doing it, a multinational does it in cooperation with the state. It's colonialism. I, I, again, I don't care what you call it or what you call the company or the actor doing the, th the thieving, uh, uh, doing the stealing. The relationship is still the same. The dynamic is the exact same. And uh, I think it's, it's so disgusting for people to say, well, yeah, well, those are refugees and these guys are economic migrants. It, even when they make this difference, they still don't take in the refugees. I was showing you just earlier how, how in 2018, the United States took in 11 Syrian refugees. I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I must be dreaming because it sounds so absurd. It's true. It's true. So they, they create the refugees and then they won't even take them in. And then the other people, they lock them in cages in the border. 
for the crime of wanting a better life. Didn't every single person in the United States go there because they wanted a better life? What, what, what is these hundreds of years of immigrants coming from Europe, from Ireland? They didn't also want a better life. Kamala Harris, her parents, they're not immigrants. Blinken, Tony Blinken, Secretary of State, Joe Biden. So they, 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 get, they go to the country, they're nice and secure, and then they lock the door and say, no thanks, you can't come in. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm not entertaining clowns, uh, despicable, ignorant people who want to come here and act like the, the colonialism from 500 years ago, 300 years ago doesn't affect us today. You don't, just don't talk about the subject then. <laughs> just stop embarrassing yourself, really. I, I, I wish that it, it were a thing of the past. It would, it would be half an issue if it, this stuff actually stopped like 100 years ago. It didn't stop. It's still happening. And that's, that's the point. It, 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 it compounds. It adds on top of each other. It piles up. And then they blame the victim. They look at the Africans. They look at the South Americans. They look at the Arabs and say, oh, it's your fault. You're poor. You did that. You're corrupt. Your people are corrupt. You know, you're not as good as us. Man. <laughs> Go ahead, keep, keep rewriting that history. That's not going to work. You know, ignorance will only last for so long. <laughs>